Can you stop? Can you stop? Fuck with infinity stones. Hello everyone, I'm Hugo. And I'm Jake. And welcome to Ask Hugo. I'm here to answer more of your questions. Uh, yeah. That's the premise that's of the show. That's the whole thing. Um, new set. There's just a shelf. It's the same. It's we got the backdrop, but the lights are up. It's different. Does that say Eucerium? Jugo unjaked. That's actually pretty good. That's that's original. I've never gotten that before. <laughs> Is the swing from progressive to conservative just a cycle that will doom us all for eternity? Or at some point will humanity sort its shit out? And if so, how do you uh, envisage that'll happen? Envision? Yeah. In Visage. By the way, I just noticed. You. Are those your new glasses? Of course. Oh they yeah, are. they're the one we picked out on stream. Oh, I can nice. see with them, and then without them, I cannot. Oh, that's uh, glasses and I didn't want. I didn't want to wear the uh, contacts today. So these are my. I'm now um, nine thousand percent more hipstery. Oh good. The glasses also yeah. make our political opinions seem more legitimate than they actually are, which is to say they are not at all. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway. As um, far as... What's that called? That, there's a word for that where it swings. Uh, it's not the zeitgeist. It's the... It's a something... I don't remember. Uh, the word I'm thinking of, overton window, but that's overton not what you're thinking Overton window is sort of like that. Anyway. Uh, I think kind of, but not necessarily in the way you might be thinking. I think that often the way we think of conservative and progressive or whatever you might want to call them, uh, the dichotomies we have currently, I think we have a tendency to think about paradigms and politics as a very static thing, even though... I, it, it's not been right. for years. If you look at what a conservative viewpoint is today versus what it was 50 years ago or whatever. 15 years ago. Whatever, sure. They're completely different. So certainly we swing back and forth, but continually progressive viewpoints. At one point, abolitionism, or ab being an abolitionist, was a progressive viewpoint. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and it gets to the point where that stuff becomes just the norm. Right. Uh, it's that's, how it works. By, by the way, that's why, like, some people... It's usually the right. They say, like, ah, Democrats, they were bad once, you remember? It's, right. That's why I don't identify with a party. Right. Like, I identify they, as a progressive. They uh, bring as up, a liberal. Uh, often they'll bring up, like, Abraham Lincoln was a Republican. Uh, yeah, but, That like, was before they switched and then the names changed and then switched back. Right. The party platforms were quite different but yeah, anyway it doesn't really matter so um, yes i think it goes back and forth but it's not what a it goes... cycle it's not like the it's not like weather no it's 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 more like socially speaking um when things get more progressive the other side will get more conservative or vice versa so it's a pushback it's a it's kind of a people don't like conservatives specifically hence the name don't typically like change. That's why they're conservative. They're to keep the status quo. Yeah. So the last five years, like basically since Obama's second term, um, a lot of things have changed as far as our social zeitgeist. We got gay marriage. Yeah. Um, we're very, very openly pro equal rights. I would, um, I, we're I, very pro trans. We're very pro LGBTQ plus. Specifically within the last 15 years, if we're talking about this in specific examples, the gay marriage debate or like gay equality, if you look from the yeah. 90s to now, went from just like being okay with gay people like existing in right. the 90s. Kind of a, not like super right. progressive idea. I mean, yeah. they were on TV and, and stuff, but like it was more progressive than it is today. Now it's pretty normal to be like, oh yeah, gay people, yeah, whatever. And so, and it, now it's like trans issues are sort of the upfront political issue that's 48, like in your face. 48 years ago, Martin Luther King Jr. had been dead for a year. Right. So, I mean, like, it's, it's not a long time. It's within your parents' lifetime. They were teenagers when that happened. That was the civil rights movement. And then you saw a hard swing to the right. You had Reagan and Nixon and all that sure. shit. And then you get a little bit liberal for a while. Um, we end up moving forward. And, uh, you know, the Clinton stuff. He got a, bl a blajay. So uh, that means we have to go conservative, right? Because you can't have blajays. And then you had Bush. You can't have wars. So we went... Obama can't have blacks, so we went Trump can't have idiots, so the next person will probably be less of an idiot. We'll see what happens. I don't know which side they'll be on. It doesn't necessarily mean that you'll switch, because I don't think Trump 
well, I don't think most people think Trump is a Republican. He's a conservative, but he's not Republican. Republican he, has changed entirely. We don't remember that this is like if the Tea Party would have won. Trump is your without the Christian. Trump is your Fox News watching uncle. Yeah, who's like Infowarsy says they're Republican, but yeah. really they're just really hard right. Yeah. So so as far as a swing, I don't think we saw much of a a swing as far as like. Right to left, I just think the left wasn't emboldened because the candidates sucked, and the right, because a lot of them watch Infowars and a lot of them are Fox Newsy, that guy talks to them like the people they like to watch on TV. It just so happened that he emboldened that side of the thing. It All it takes is excitement on one side or the other. Like That's why people like John McCain won and John Kerry didn't. Or, or John McCain was, you know, he won primaries. Yeah. Um, and uh, he's dead, by the way. That happened. Um, John Kerry, the living husk that he is, still alive. <laughs> LaCroix boy! Again! That's like five in a row! He, he asks the questions! You know what? He might have two in the... Y'all better start drinking LaCroix or something, because apparently it makes you insightful. Dear Hugo and Jake, it seems like absolutely every property is getting a reboot these days. But what would you actually like to see a reboot of? I would like to see a reboot of Reboot. They did a reboot of Reboot. It's on Netflix and it's fucking terrible. A live action one? It's awful. Because yes. I don't want a live action it's one. It's fucking no. shit. I want, an, I want a non-3D, I want an, a 2D animation um, a la like the DuckTales remake. Okay. Yeah, of well, Reboot. Why do you want Reboot to be 2D? Wasn't it its whole thing? It was like early 3D animation yeah, on television? Need, it doesn't need to be anymore. We, we, I, think, I think it's interesting if, if you did Reboot, but um, you kind of, because pixel art and and other stuff i think it'd be cool if they went to different places and the animation maybe changed oh okay that's an interesting concept yeah uh, i think i think conceptually speaking it'd be good you can also do a, a vr where maybe you hire some actors or whatever and they're like wow we do not look good like this and then they'd finish the episode sure. or whatever the remake is on netflix i want to say and it does have live action segments and the premise is it's a bunch of high school kids mm -mm. uh who that like, wasn't what reboot was. who, no who go into a computer and then it's cg and they're like superheroes in the reboot computer. Were they fighting Y2K bugs? I don't remember. When they, it's been a long that was time. The, that was the mid to late 90s. The, My I, grandmother, R.I.P. Grandma, she used to uh, record that for me. The only episode I remember on is one where they a program came in and they were like underwater. That's all I remember. Mm. The thing I want to reboot of, though, I want to reboot a Quantum Leap. I will say this... With Bacula? Okay, Bacula can... Can he be... Ooh, he, can he, Bacula be the guy that sends the mission? He can be Al. He can be the Al. But well, he's not Al. He should be no, Scott. he can be Scott Bacula. No, he should actually... His name should just be Scott. Scott. He's Scott yeah. Bacula. <laughs> I was on a show like this, so they sent me. No. But Scott Bacula should be in it in some capacity, I think, because well, what's that guy idea. fucking doing? Uh, but, who would be your actor? Who would be ooh, your new Bacula? I, I don't know. What was Bacula's name in that? Uh, uh, Sam. Sam. You don't... Sam Beckett. Beckett. You don't need... A big actor, Scott Bakula, no. wasn't like you. Just need a young, decent, c with comedy chops because Quantum Leap is primarily an action comedy with show. Comedy chops. I'm thinking. Keep going. I don't know, but I think that show today. It's a low budget show. It doesn't have to be very high budget. Every week it can be a different cast. You don't have to have a ton of returning regulars. You just need the two mains, and maybe if you want to bring in the evil Leaper stuff, I'd love if they explored that a little bit more. Um, but I think that show is so open for opportunities, you can basically make it whatever you want. It's kind of like, it'd be I like an Americanized one. version of Doctor Who a little bit. A little, but... Without it, companions and stuff. I think, and, I think, less, I like and the, not sci-fi, because most of the stuff isn't like high sci-fi yeah, stuff. It's no, just, it's, it's like, um, I don't know how to... It's time travel, but it's more like the it's a, it's a people caper. Right. It's always about... It's not Monster of the Week, it's Person of the Week, and it, sometimes they're famous. Right. Sometimes they're not. Last season they did more of the famous stuff and yeah. more like in the last season you leapt into like a guy who might be a vampire. Is he a vampire? And then the Lee the... Harvey Oswald episode, right? Right. And, and there's that. an Elvis episode. There's a Dr. Sure. Laura Schlesinger episode where she actually plays herself in it, which is kind of funny. That's interesting. But yeah, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind that. I also wouldn't mind if it was Quantum Leap and then it, it did have like two leapers. Right. And maybe there was there was or three of them or whatever, sure. and they all have to. 
go and do things, and maybe it's it's like one episode will be whatever Sam Beckett character, and then another episode will be that, and then and maybe they'll converge in in the middle of a season That'd or be something. Kind of interesting. Maybe one of them's evil after a while, and you have a I don't know. I think there's a lot of lot to do in Quantum Leap. That's a good idea. I have think you, that's fine. Have you seen the episode of Quantum Leap where they deal with the evil leaper? It's actually mm-hmm. pretty interesting. It's in the last season again when they were kind of like, we need ideas because the show's not. Well, too I think an simple. evil leaper is a good idea. It, it was. She was also. I they were vague again because I think they were playing on expanding on it as it went but the show got canceled. Uh, she was also leaping around time and just doing mm-hmm. the opposite. She only got to leap to the next place when she fucked up someone's life. And, like, she's not necessarily like, yeah. I want to be a piece of shit, but what else am I gonna do? Her that's companion funny. was a little more obviously evil and maybe the devil. But that's not the point. Okay, okay. Well, <laughs> you don't have to add that part. That's just fine. the general concept. I'm thinking, as far as reboots... I don't know what to do for this necessarily, but I think, I think since it's been so long, I think you'd get a really good response to like a house with with him again, like at post. It's been long enough to where post spoilers for house. If you don't want spoilers for house, six years ago we got in trouble for house spoilers, and now it's been six more fucking years. The show's been off the air Fuck for like you! a decade. It's Wilson funny. dies, so when after he doesn't die on on camera, but you know he goes off and they spend time together. Yeah. Post Wilson house. Somehow, maybe he even did... He's done grieving. If I remember correctly, also, at the end of the show, he was, like, in... It was implied he was, like, gonna go back to prison because for violating his parole or something. So maybe... He's probably gonna go on the lam, and this is probably out of prison house. Right, he's out of prison. Maybe Cuddy's back, and she's like, fuck it, you know, I... I I don't think she can (laughs) hire him, but I think... I think, like, like, House being able to be, like, a consultant, maybe having, like, a private... private something somewhere... I don't know. I think it would be kind of interesting and slowly over time. I don't want the original cast back immediately. No. But I think like slowly over time you could run into Chase and Cameron or you could run into, you know, I think I, I think it'd be fun. I think it'd be fun too because you could I think if you start the show a little bit different. Maybe House has changed in the past, whatever. Maybe he's not as big of an asshole. He's right. still maybe a little bit more how do I put this? You know Scrubs Dr. Cox. Yeah, he has an a, arc. A little bit more like that. More, how more we, like Cox and less like House. Right. He's still Cox a, isn't cruel, but House can be. Right. House, a little less cruel, still a dick, but maybe he actually, at this point, wants to kind of foster, like, a younger group of physicians, and he's like, you know what, I have spent my life being kind of a piece of shit. Maybe I do need to... Yeah, I and think, he can struggle with that and not be perfect all the time and still have his moments where he's like, fuck you, I'm House. I also ah. like the idea of him not being addicted to pills and seeing how that version of House... They did that for, like half a season once. But they didn't, but they they didn't do it. I know. They didn't. He was, he was, you know, I think, I think dealing with that addiction still. Yeah. But not actually taking them and not, not going through the, you know, he goes through a psychosomatic event and he has, but I think, I think like actually talking about that and talking about like the loss, I think that's, they, that show did a really, I don't know if you've gone back and watched it. I know you have, but if you haven't gone back and watched it since, they do a really good job. Like we're coming up on when um, when Cutner leaves, and I'm not going to spoil that yeah, because she hasn't good. seen it. Um, oh, wow, yeah. Or she doesn't remember. Yeah. Um, they deal with that really, really well. I so really stuff like, like that, that um, I don't know. It was, a, it was a show. It's sure. It's Sherlock. I mean, he lives at 221 ba- B. B. Baker, Baker Street. I mean, yeah. he does. Um, it's Sherlock, but he's... he's, he's the thing. Is, so I think, I think that'd be a good reboot. You know what I was found I'd watch weird? watch Hugh Laurie do that again. You know what I found weird about House? What's that? Is that it's a show that's ostensibly, it's a remake of Sherlock Holmes. He's, yeah. you know, he has Wilson instead of Watson. But instead of like not having Sherlock Holmes be a thing in that universe, it is. And I'm shocked no one has ever said to him, you're a lot like Sherlock Holmes, but a doctor. Well, I think you that's realize too that. on the nose. Well, then don't have Sherlock Holmes be a thing in universe because a patient literally was once like, I got you a book. Yeah. And it's a study in Scarlet. <laughs> and it's like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> Your name is House, and you solve mysteries, and you live at 221B Baker Street, and your friend's name is Wilson, and the patient who gave Wait, it to Wait, why is him? his name being House interesting? Holmes? House? Oh, oh, it's spelled so differently. That's okay. intentional. They intentionally did that. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, uh, the patient who gave it to him, I think, his name was even Irene Adler, which is a character from Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Which is a... Whatever. Anyway... Yeah, I really like House. Show, so, yeah, that should come back. Next question. Yeah, that went on for a really fucking long time. Jesus Christ. Elizabeth Ortiz, when will Hugo wear a dress? I'd love to see that. This is such what? an odd... This is an oddly specific question. It implies an expectation that we have set that I don't remember doing. I know before I had mentioned 
Oh. On an episode, remember I told you in kindergarten I used to put on a dress to make people laugh. Is that a what lot? this is a reference to? I don't know. But honestly, if this show goes on long enough, I guarantee the chance of me wearing a dress on camera go to 100%. There's just no chance that doesn't happen. No, I've never actually considered that. Because cross-dressing isn't that funny. Eh. But Hugo in a dress looking sexy is funny. Looking thick. We could finally settle the debate. Like a little... Are s- traps gay? Yeah, you, you don't shave for it. That's cheating. Allie Norris, dear Hugo and Jake, first of all, I love your Jordan Peterson series. Am I reading this whole thing? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. So there's this kid in a couple of my classes at school. He's a bit odd. For instance, he thinks a one-party government system would be a good idea. That's called fascism. He, he thinks that fat people and disabled people should be sterilized. He makes Nazi jokes a lot. The, he the, wa- can I just say... Are we stopping at, at every point? Uh, at least at this point, those aren't jokes. He's he's a fucking fascist making jokes about sterilizing fat people. This is, just, this is just Nazis. He's just a Nazi. Anyway, continue. He once said that two gay men can't be in love. For a while... I thought he was just funny, but after one lesson we were in, I've been a little concerned. After one lesson? Are they British? I don't understand. Uh, We're studying the Canterbury Tales, and we watched this. There's a link in class to, to sum it up. The girl is pursued by two guys, and she is forced to marry the winner when they fight by her father. When the teacher brought up gender roles, we were all like, she's essentially a trophy and an object, and I don't bring up objectification lightly. Uh, this kid puts his hands up and says that it's not sexist, they won't see her as an object if they would fight to the death for her, and then he goes on a rant. It's no di- quote, it's no different from today's society because the superior male gets the girl, he's an incel. And I thought we had to point out to him, oh, and then we had to point out to him that it's not the girl choosing the superior male, it's the father. Anyway, my friend pointed out how much it sounds like an incel, hey, I, I hit it. I thought it sounded like Jordan Peterson, uh, who he's mentioned in my politics class before. So I asked him, and he didn't exactly give a straight answer about whether he's a fan, but he said he was very familiar with his ideas. Do you think the school should be taking this kid a little more seriously than just a joke, considering he didn't think it was wrong that the girl didn't consent, and he's made a lot of jokes about this stuff? He also once said that he could have any girl in this school if he wanted to, and he talks like Jordan Peterson with that strangely calm, poetic way of talking. I mean, there's nothing the school can do about just a creepy Potential kid. rapey? Like, like I think you can keep an eye on him, but... At I, the very best, I just imagine everyone else in the school is probably pretty aware this kid's kind of a creep. Yeah, and a, don't hang out with this guy. I would say, though, in this particular instance, I think it's very important in these cases when someone like that brings up these opinions that are very backward and very, yeah. like, detrimental to other people and, like, strip away the humanity of others... Every time they bring it up, you cannot let it go without being like, hey, no, you're wrong, and here's why. Yeah, I think, I think it's important to add the counter voice, so do the, that. Especially, because people like him, I don't, again, we've talked about this on the Jordan Peterson video series, incels, I genuinely mostly feel bad for, because I think it comes from a place of, yeah. like, sadness and loneliness and maybe desperation and confusion. Mm-hmm. So, I have sympathy for this guy, but at the same time, he's talking about sterilizing people, fuck that, fuck him. Yeah. But, like... He's probably just, I don't know how to put this, he probably doesn't mean it. He probably is a scared... He probably wants attention. He's probably a scared, confused, insecure child child of a person. Yeah, and he's lonely, and he probably doesn't, um, you know... A lot lot of the people that uh, latch on to Jordan Peterson, I don't want to say this, of all of them, slash you, um, they don't have someone to tell them otherwise so they latch on to jordan peterson it's kind of like why some people latch on to religions in that way sure. um it's it's kind of a a father figurey sort of thing like someone's finally providing guidance and that can be appealing to people so it, it probably doesn't come from just this malice filled hate yeah. fucking place but it also breeds that so yeah. while it doesn't start there it ends it, there and that's important to understand so it is important that you uh, offer a counter to that Also, Jordan Peterson sucks. The Cosmic Nemesis. Dear Tooth Gap and Fat Boy Jacob. Don't call me Jacob. I ran into a bit of quandary while pondering God and shit. Since I was a kid, I have always believed in the existence of extraterrestrials. Not in the Area 51. I was abducted in aliens. Rape me kind of way, though. 
So anyway, I realized that I believe in something that has no evidence of existing, kind of like a certain god or gods. Uh, I've been denying for quite a while. My question is, is this hypocritical to believe in aliens while saying that God doesn't exist because there's zero scientific evidence for him? Does believing in aliens require the same sort of faith as believing in God, or is it different? Please respond, because I need an answer. This question's been bothering me. Thanks. Been a fan for a few years. Keep up the content, Mommy and Daddy. It makes me kind of laugh thinking about this guy sitting in his room like, Fuck! Aliens! Ah! Does he mean aliens no. visiting or aliens no, existing no. in the universe? No, I, I think he means aliens existing in the universe. Well, that's in which statistically case, fine. Right. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. I think you're underselling when you say there's no evidence for that, assuming you mean just other life in the We're universe. We're evidence of life, aliens. Life exists, therefore it's reasonable to assume life can exist in similar in conditions the, in elsewhere. In the billion trillion life-giving planets in the infinite universe. It makes sense to me, also. That That's just a statistics thing. And again, it's yeah. different than saying, like, I definitely know life exists on other planets. I think it probably does. Especially, like, well, th that's, that's fair to me, Paradox. We've only been in existence uh, as humans for, like, 200,000 years, maybe. Something like that. And as recognizable humans with brains that function. And that doesn't even... We For the last 2,000 years, we've had actual, like... Maybe 8,000 years, we've had actual, like, society. In the last 2,000 years, we discovered to write. In the last 1,000 years, we've had history. In the last 100 years, we've had ways to see into the cosmos. We are infinitesimally small on the scale of, like... Right. We only went to the moon, like, yeah. 50, 60 years and I don't ago. Mean, and I don't, mean, I don't mean see into the cosmos, like, look up and have a telescope, because Galileo and stuff, but... Yeah. Um, who perfected it? The Dutch invented it. Galileo. Um... But, like, actually being able to, like, communicate into yep. some form, like, with the radio and stuff. So, yeah, the, the, I, think, I think if you think aliens are, like, definitely currently around us and Earth is an important orb in the universe, that doesn't have any evidence. No, but, but just it, life existing. Yeah. yeah. That's reasonable. I don't think that's an unreasonable thing to think. Yeah. So, calm down. It's okay. You're fine. Bobby's Art Show. My question for Hugo is if he's aware the the Paul a Allen sent mail and presents and his famous picture to another YouTuber, Lazy Game Reviews, uh, proof in the last unboxing video, shouldn't the Paul Allen be sending you the nerdy electronics? Aren't you afraid he's going to be stolen away from you? He was here yesterday. Is this true, Paul? Yeah, it is true. Have you been cheating on us, Paul? <laughs> oh, is this a... Okay. I feel very offended. Jake let you into his home, and now you're sending pictures to other YouTubers? I see how it is. You're dead to us. <laughs> Hi, Paul. Jacob Andrews, what are your thoughts on determinism versus free will? And this is the last question. I'm glad you ended on something simple. I thought this was fun. I don't remember if we've ever talked about this before. Determinism versus free will? We've dabbled in it, but like... This is a tough question. The crux of it is irrelevant, so... Be, uh, right. Yeah. Because on the, <laughs> on the one hand, I view the universe as naturalistic. Therefore, yeah. it stands to reason that things follow the laws of physics. That means if you track cause and effect backwards all the way back to the Big Bang, at the very least, things are effectively deterministic physics playing out. You know what I mean? Right. It's, Boom, it's, it's like it's Think of it like uh, very, very complex versions of ripples on a pond. Right. So, like, because that that could affect sure it affects the water, but it also affects the things inside the water, like right. the microbes and the algae, all the way down to the life and the life that develops. Sure, and, and if like, that rock never falls, it's a butterfly effect possibility. Right. There's no bigger butterfly effect than the Big Bang. Right. So on that level, I think things are deterministic because sure. at the end of the day, if I think that the Big Bang happened as science currently understands that it did, mm -hmm. and things currently work the way that we understand science and let's say quantum physics doesn't throw anything crazy in there that's like oh here's a magical particle that makes fucking right. free will work like unless that happened and that's not even the purview of <laughs> physics in the first place i don't see any way around determinism other than if you're talking about definitions and trying to define free will as some like I think illusory concepts see, that we feel you know what i mean free will works within determinism just fine because it's not it's, it's free in that you and I can agree we're making decisions, but, we're not, but, we're but not. all things before that needed to happen for us to come to that. We're free to make 
decisions, we're not free to make every decision consecutive Correct. or like yes. simultaneously. Yeah. I agree. So so I, I think I, you can always go left rather than right. But because we can't go back and repeat it, it's deterministic. You went right. You, went, you went right. Right. Yeah, right. Or you went left. It doesn't like there's and you never again will get that same choice, even if you turn the car around, go back to the intersection, turn right, you've done you've done the left already. Sure. So it's still it's still determined. Um and and that can really bake your noodle, so to speak. It can it can really be hard to wrap your mind around. First of all, can you even imagine infinity? Can you even imagine an infinite universe? Look up, look look out your window and look out. It might be nighttime. If it's daytime, it's less impressive. But if it's nighttime, and you can see stars and stuff, that's just like what your eyes can see. If if you could see everything in the path without darkness, it would be white. Yeah. Because it's just filled with stars and shit and planets and stuff. Like, just just the infinite part. And then add on top of that that we even have consciousness. So, and, and none of it matters. Does it matter if we have free will or determinism? Because nothing changes. If it's deterministic, it doesn't matter if I think that or not. Because it's right. determined But if it's I free will, it doesn't matter either. Because the same things are going to happen. It's just... We we have the illusion of free will now, or we have actual free will, but either way, the end results are going to be probably the same, but we can never know, so it doesn't matter. It's it's something that I love to talk about, but I know... I know It's like imagining what you would do with a billion dollars if you were never going to be a billionaire. I think, I think myself in the circles about it. I do it's, too! It's like, eh. Because you, you, you find yourself an answer and you ask, but what if, and then it isn't. Yeah. So it is interesting. I, um, it's one of those problems that by observing it, you're engaging with the problem. Like, I'm, I think in trying to determine if determinism is correct, I'm making a determination, therefore... Right. <laughs> now, now people people like to, like to not... And I think it's because determinism implies this sort of... Um, guidance or intelligence above it I know, uh, well i know i know but like think about that if, if if something's deterministic technically in the grand scheme of things i'm not responsible for my own decisions but you totally are in real life so like it's hard to be like if you don't have free will then why just my why do my decisions matter see this is but but was but was it deterministic that you would hear that sentence and then change your philosophy and even can you even have like so I, I think operate with it with free will within determinism. Yes. So I think I think it's it's like a matroshka doll, like a yeah. nesting doll. So determinism is everything. And then free will is inside it for those that are conscious enough to make those things happen. And it's still determined by choices. And maybe you are always going to turn left or Art. right. Okay. But but you're still responsible for those decisions and you ought to live your life by that. Um Probably because uh, if you stop making decisions, you will stop existing. <laughs> because eventually you got to be like, I'm going to eat. If you anyone's know, watching this while high, they're having a great time right now. I dude, mean. if you're high, you're probably like right on board with me. You're like, whoa. Because I'm not high, but like, I, yeah. we think about this kind of stuff a lot. Is there anything else you wanted to add? Because I could talk about this for five hours and we end up in the same spot. No, I think Just like it. determinism or free will I think in general. So, uh, yeah, if you have any more of those questions. Oh, we didn't actually give an answer. Are we just going with my Matroshka example? Like, I think that... Like, which is more... Okay, which is more on the, on relevant? On the whole, I think determinism is true in the sense that everything that is ever going to happen in the universe as we understand it was probably predetermined based upon the laws of physics once everything was set into motion in the same way that once you... Hit a cue ball. Once you hit a cue ball, the positions of the balls at the end of yeah. the motion could be calculated <coughs> based on the numbers that you put into it. But you determined, I mean? but determined doesn't mean something determined it. Correct. It just means that it is. Yes. By the rules so of it's the very, system that I, governs it. That's hard to get around, but that's probably the case. Yeah. I, we probably confused a lot of people. That's okay. And Some people may be tuned out. So. Anyway, so I guess that's it. Uh, if you want to send us stuff, you can do so at this P.O. box. Mmm, that would be delicious, I yeah. bet. You send, send us something that's good. Send us a tasty treat with your, with your present. <laughs> you can, uh, follow, uh, I almost forgot your name. Uh, Jake? Since we've known each other for ten fucking years. Has it been a decade? Almost. Jesus Christ. I gotta Christ. imagine. Which... So it'd be 2008? Also... That's pretty close. It'd be kind of weird that I would probably. forget your name. <laughs> Ever. Yeah, anyway... You can follow Jake. Yeah, that's my name. At Papa Bird Jake on Twitter. Hugo Hugo Reloaded. You can also subscribe to the channel oh, and tell God. your friends. 
And then uh, you can donate to our Patreon campaign. We just uh, tipped back over the 1500 uh, level, which gives us the Harold Penisman show. So you guys are going to get a preview of Harold Penisman this week. Cool. So I guess that's it. Until next time, I'm Hugo. I'm a hipster that jumped into Jake's body. I'm going to be eating mung beans soon. Can I have that? Because we're going to do this Friday. Well, that, that one, don't pull it from there. That's a, that's a good way to break it. Oh, Tabby! 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 Ugh. We're going to be doing the wheel! What is it? The Richard J. Evans Memorial Wheel? I think the Richard the Richard E. Evans? I don't know. Richard E. Evans? Memorial Wheel? This will be on a different camera. Can you just forever stop that? No. I was still going to play, um... I have to justify the business expense. <laughs> now it's a business expense. It's a prop now! IRS! You crazy. Can we just... Can we move? We can't... No. Anyway. Ugh!